Now, job creation appears to be the major decider of the choice of a parliamentary candidate in a Wutu senior constituency in the central region in this year's elections. In today's constituency diaries, my colleague Francis Aban visits that constituency which has been monopolized by the governing National Democratic Congress for years with a seeming fierce battle between the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hannah Tete, and marketing guru, George Nyanda, a new wave of politics is taking root in Ewutu Senya, christening the Hannah George Contest. Constituents have been outlining key issues which will influence their choice of parliamentary candidate in the next administration. <laughs> Felix and Bismarck are locals in Eutu. Pensive about the stakes going into this year's parliamentary elections. But in the Ewutu Senya West constituency, the stakes are high and sometimes feed into conversations which easily turn into heated arguments. <laughs> It has been christened the Hannah George contest with a little over 70,000 votes up for grabs. The constituency is predominantly rural, with towns like Ewutu, Senyabriku and Bodriasi being the most dense with thousands of votes. This is arguably the most heated contest for the seat since the year 1996. The NDC has enjoyed monopoly of the seat, winning five times, with the MPP riding their luck once in 2004. In 1996, Babalami Abu Sadat beat the MPP's Haruna Iseku by over 9,000 votes. In the year 2000, Hanatete Koda took over the baton from the incumbent MP and beat the MPP's John Kojo Aka with the vote difference of 6,174. Then onwards to the 2004 elections and the MPP, after two times of asking, won the parliamentary seat. Ope Abe won, beating the NDC's Moses Ahenfo Aqua with over 13,700 votes difference. In 2008, the NDC fielded a new candidate, David Nanalabi, who took back the seat from the sitting MPP MP in a close race with 2,337 the difference. 2012 saw the comeback of one-time MPs. Hana Tete had to fend off competition from Ope Abe, winning 23,032 votes as against the MPP's 18,487. So, can Hannah Tete be third time lucky, or will George Under seek to break the NDC's winning formula? <laughs> Meet Amadonko, a native of Eutu. The farmer has been a passionate supporter of the NDC, and this time is no different. What strengthens her resolve is what she describes as the undue attack on the personality of Hannah Tete. I am Amadonko. I don't know my age. I work for the government and Zoom Lion. 
I don't like the manner in which they attack her personality and arguing about whether she comes from here or not. She hasn't finished her work, but I have hope and I'll vote for her to enable her to finish the work. Okay. Now, and her view represents that of most women I interacted with in the township. Kweku is the owner of a popular drinking spot in Breku, Fresh One. At the entrance of the bar, a signboard with the inscription, Change has happened in USA, change is coming to Ghana greets you. But his political measuring rod is an interesting one. <laughs> Oh, first in the Navy, you have between your hundred Ghana City, the Bazi City, the Bureau of Crowd, twenty Ghana City, Scrab, Minya, in your baby, Minya. Okay. Now, what shall we buy her? I throw change in USA, change in Ghana, a year MPP, and then who may be a mifri. Some are told I'm going to be a mifri. Maybe I'm free, in Tina, my child, the MPP, the man, me a pulley agent, a pulley agent. Pulley agents have dwindled, and I don't get the money I want. I support the MPP. George will win. Hannah's work has not been impressive over the period. Recruitment, no, Hannah, man, Hannah, so what I tell him. Nedma, you say, Papa, ha. Busum, I can't go back to Abia and Olba. Oh, by a horse. Wait to your school fees. And so, your whole school fees are what you are my mouthful. But Uncle George did it. Fen Funra Baba, Fen Adora Baba, and Tiesh and Waka can come next year to Abania de Mana. Oh, baby, Papa, ma, I would. I then proceeded to Brekuzongo to see if the views are divergent. Let me start with you, sir. What's your name? My name is Chris Tamagro. And you are? I'm an NDC party member. NDC party member. How long have you been an NDC party member? Oh, for a long time. Let me say around 2008. Okay. So you voted in 2008? Yeah. You voted 2012? Yeah. So that's our constituency diary focusing on the Ewutu Senya constituency in the central region. We'll bring you the full report in our subsequent bulletins. We're still staying on politics and the opposition New Patriotic Party is demanding the police service provides concrete measures to forestall violence in the presidential and parliamentary elections with just exactly two weeks to go for the crucial polls. The party has written a letter to the Inspector General of Police cataloging a list of incidences of violence and intimidation they say were unlawfully perpetrated against their officials and members all over the country by NDC activists. Let's get a better understanding of what the MPP is asking for. We are joined on the line by Acting Chairman Freddie Blay. Many thanks for your time, sir. Uh, thank you, Araba. So this is quite a tall list. We looked at the, the letter that you wrote. It's quite a tall list. And run us through well, some of the complaints. Them. Certainly, them. certainly. Run us through some of the complaints you referenced for the benefit of our viewers. Yes. Yes. Quite a number of complaints. The most recent one is the attack on our presidential candidate president by uh, a group of individuals who said they were going on our but without any provocation, they attacked the resident of our presidential candidate. A couple of days ago, the DC for one of the Constituencies in BA, after he's gone and come home from campaign, had his residence attacked. He was butchered, battered, and uh, nearly lost his life. After I talk to you now, we don't know what has happened. We've lost a complaint about it. Nothing has been done about it. A few days ago, or a week ago, the Minister for Sport. So do, 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 do. Personally, attack our peace. You know, do, 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 do. personally, attack it, slap it. We lost the complaint. Arabas, I talk to you now. Nothing has been done about it. 
But even then, earlier on, a few weeks, a few months ago, persistently, consistently, individuals and groups have attacked members of our party and uh, sometimes our offices. In some cases, when people are lined up to go and register during the limited registration, some groups have come and taken over the equipment being used by electoral officers, beating electoral officers and beating our members who are trying to register. We've lodged complaints. I'm saying all over the country. I can mm. take all your time about it. So you're saying that the police has failed to act on all of these complaints. What we have heard the police say, in fact, the IGP is on record as saying that they are investigating, uh, for example, the Nima incident. What else do you expect of the police, sir? Well, Araba, that is what is normally said. We are investigating. That is why we have reason to go and visit the IGP. And to him that there had been reports of lodged with the police, complaint law with the police. Some take it back as far back as a year ago. We have not heard it. There had been an attack on our our offices in Accra, headquarters, all these things. We have not complained again. And now it's getting near to the oh, You could see that our membership getting level. Our membership are complaining. Some officers have themselves had some complaints made by themselves, made press conferences, particularly the regional chairman of Porta, the regional chairman of Brother Hapo, they all done that. As I talk to you now, we haven't seen any concrete steps taken by the police to the administration to convince us, to tell Kenya that these are the concrete steps that they are taking. We came out to them. We went to them, had a bit for the IGP, led by me. A group of uh, senior members of our party accompanied me. We lodged the complaint, catalog what we are doing, and did ask them that please do something before we get nearer to the election. Because indeed, there is in the country a sense of insecurity, tension, and so forth. So please, you are the police officer. You can enforce the law. If you don't do anything about it, we fear something else could happen and we may not be in a position to contain it. That is the point we are making. Telling the police, the leadership of the police, we are telling people in this country, we send copies of our letters to various uh, development partners of our country. We are not happy. We are worried. We don't know what could happen. As we can. People are, of course, calling peace, peace, peace. But these are concrete complaints that we have made, which we have not had access to. Araba. But, Mr. Blay, is it your expectation that the police would effect arrest of some of these people involved in some of these incidences? What can they do, really, if they don't have the proof or the evidence? We to... haven't. No, the police don't act in isolation. The police, when I lodge a complaint with the police over a crime or over what I feel has been done against me, when they are taking any steps to remedy it, I'm told. But the public is told. They are saying that these things have happened. We have not had answers from the police, nor the public told about it. That is the complaint. Hmm. It is not that you must do justice. It is not that you must enforce the law. Let people in this country, and particularly those who have lodged a complaint, let them also know. Let them see that steps have been taken. Well, you've also raised uh, concerns about the police service's announcement of uh, plans to use new police recruits who are not yet fully qualified uh, to monitor polling stations. What are you worried about? That is a very disturbing development. And about policemen are those who have gone to enter training and have qualified as this, a sworn oath and passed out. Posted, these are policemen. That those who have been call or invited to go through training, whether they pass or not, if it remains a day for the person up, if they fail, they don't they are not policemen. Now are you inviting to go and vote? Recruits? Those who are not policemen? What is happening? Nobody's disturbing. 
We are not happy with it. Are they, do they have numbers? Can you call them policemen? How big policemen or what? I think the police, the IGP should come back again. Should come back again and tell them you know, something that is less disturbing. So finally, we I think have, it should not be done. Mm. We think that should not be done. We are asking the police, the IGP, not to do so in the best interest of this country. Mm, mm, mm. And finally, have you received any response to your letter uh, from the Once IGP? I talk to you now, no, I haven't had any response, and uh, the police have not come out to tell us anything. Uh, but in our in our presentation, we also talked about the idea of the, the IGP saying that he is going to, as it were, uh, uh, ban social media in Ghana on the on the day of the election. We appeal to him that. We are disturbed by that. We should not do so. It could disturb this country. All right. Many thanks for your time. And that was acting national chairman of the New Patriotic Party, uh, Freddie Blade, there, you know, uh, discussing or talking about the concerns that, you know, the party has in the list of incidences involving intimidation, alleged intimidation and uh, assault by NDC activists of their members. Well, the NDC has been responding to uh, these concerns by some parties that there is tension in the society or in the country as we head to the polls. We have about 14 days, two weeks to the polls. General Secretary of the party, Johnson Asidu Nketia, believes that there is no tension and that the police is up to the task. Since I became General Secretary and since I ever contested in any elections, the climate now leading to elections, two weeks to elections, is the most peaceful. By all means, you get some isolated incidents, but you can be the better judges. That the tensions that attended to the 2012, uh, I mean, 208 elections and so on, it, it cannot be compared to what is happening now. So I, I am very confident that we are making progress as a, as a, as a country. Because in all other elections, two weeks to election, the type of tensions and clashes and things you hear of. I've heard of about this Nima issue yeah. and I we think we will see also. We are two weeks to election. Let's pray that, I mean, we should have an ideal situation where there will be no clashes at all. But I think that it is a marked improvement over what has been happening in the country. And I think that moving forward, we should work towards a situation where there will not be any opportunity for clashes at all. So yesterday, I, I, when I arrived, I heard about these things. I went to participate in the work in Nima. Now I addressed the MPP, NDC uh, supporters equally and impressed upon them the need to be civil in their campaigning and, and so on. And indicated, reminded them that, look, you are the same Nima people living in the same community. You attend your adwares together, you do your festivals together and so on. Family, so, family relations. Family relations and, and so on. So why would you allow party callers to now make you uh, enemies? So there is no point. Within the next three weeks, these things will be over and you will continue to stay we as brothers. Those who are calling for a, a situation where we would stop the health works just in order to avoid those clashes to stop it up until the elections. So everybody should stay in their house, no exercise. I don't think so. This is not a solution at all. So uh, that was uh, General Secretary of the governing NDC, Johnson Asidu Nketia there. Now the opposition MPP is accusing government of engaging in suspicious contracts to raise funds to finance the re-election bid of President John Dramani Mahama. This accusation was leveled today by former General Secretary of the MPP, John Kujo Ousse Free, also known as Sir John. The former chief uh, uh, scribe uh, man of the opposition party alleges that government had recently entered into a $300 million agreement with a UK-based firm under the pretext of supplying equipment for national security. Uh, Joy News' Joseph Akabe was at that press conference. He joins me in the studio now. Joseph, so what is this agreement that they talk about? 
So they are saying that there's an agreement that government has entered into uh, with the hope of supplying uh, some equipment for national security. And their point is that there's a company, a UK-based company, that was registered somewhere in April. They are alleged that the company was set up by a Ghanaian in conjunction with two other uh, British citizens. And they are saying that it's suspicious in the sense that with some few months or some few days to the election, they can't understand why government will enter into a $300 million agreement. They are saying that they have information that government has already paid 120 million and they are saying that if indeed government has the intent of beefing up security why not enter it into into the agreement with a company that is well known rather than a company that was set up right in april so they suspect that company was registered first and foremost with the aim of creating this avenue to ensure that the company makes some money to enable government have enough funds for the election so we can listen to john um sir john as we call him as he addressed the press conference i've decided in my capacity as a concerned citizen of Wono in Ghana to hold this press conference because I'm worried about the path that President John Dramani Mahama and his friends and family are taking this country on. And if we allow it to continue a day beyond January 7, 2017, there will be no f uh, future for Ghana it will probably take us another generation to recover. Just this morning, I saw some research work done by Nana Tobra and his Dankwa Institute young people. That estimates that some 12 billion Ghana cities worth of contracts secured under sole sourcing since 2010 had their costs inflated by 65%. What this means is that Ghana could have saved as much as 7.8 billion Ghana cities in public funds, equivalent to $2 billion into today's deflated currency. I'm sure you have also read in the Daily Statesman of today that a bogus deal to take out $300 million of your money, our money, to allegedly fund their election efforts using national security infrastructure as an excuse. $300 million. The information that we have is that the Ministry of Finance has already paid $120 million to a bogus company that was formed in the UK just a few months ago by one Ghanaian and two British people. And this company, which came from nowhere, has suddenly been given a huge, vague contract Ghana doesn't need if at this time. Working with some Hungarians, this UK company, Santa Baron Ventures is to supply Ghana on November 30th, 2016. You heard me. November 30th, 2016. With IT software, surveillance systems, and provide national security personnel with technical training from South Africans. Yes, you heard me right. South Africans. In fact, we are even buying security equipment from Mohammed's second home, Dubai. Why do we need to spend $300 million we do not even have to acquire things that we don't even need with just one week to the general elections? Why? These are some of the very bad deals that we will make sure and the Kufuado government, God willing, will investigate and do all that is possible to get Ghanaians their money back. I want you journalists to ask Prosper Bani and Sir Tekwe why this bad deal? Why have they already paid $120 million to this bogus company? Why are they arranging letters of credit to allow this company to borrow to supply security infrastructure that we don't need at a time that we cannot even pay nurses and teachers.
So you had the former general secretary of the New Patriotic Party, uh, Kujo Owusu Efriye, there making those very serious al allegations. We're joined on the line now by the Deputy National uh, Communications Director of the NDC, Fred Abonyo. Many thanks for your time. Thank you. I'm sure you heard uh, Mr. Owusu Efriye, very serious allegations there. He's accusing your party of, or your government of en entering into uh, an agreement with a UK-based company. Uh, ostensibly to siphon funds for your campaign. How do you react to that? Well, I thank you very much, and good afternoon to your listeners. Uh, the fact how the expression can make people look so ridiculous, and uh, how the expression can make people look uh, uh, they are real self. I'm not even too sure what the status or the logos of the session is, because the last time I checked, it was a former chairman of the party who was maybe allowed anywhere near the party headquarters. If indeed the political party were to thought that call this as a serious concern, one would have thought that the chairman or the general secretary of the party would have been the one authorizing the press conference. But not the man who are dead or who look who's today, we cannot give it a, a testify or certificate who will be the one saying all manner of things. It's how unfair it is for a person of his nature to despise the media and just level at the allegation without providing any evidence that two issues out there. Because they are so desperate to have an election, and they think that the only way they can lick any head with this election is to lie, is to fabricate stories, is to say all manner of things about the president and the government. You see, sometimes they seem to forget that their names are, are, are valuable and they can just take it and everything from them. We are very focused on our campaign. If SLS is present with six nights, the other is with the campaign. The work that we have done on the ground since he came into office in 2013, the people of this country are so appreciative of it. And they are going to give me this mandate to continue. But the challenge that is that every hour of us thinks that everybody is a thief. And so when he's even sleeping in his room, and he hears a mouse maybe on his window, he's like, well, he's going to be doing Because of the kind of thing that they did when in the office for eight years, they think that everybody is like that. Everybody is this. All right, Mr. Agbenyo, Mr. Agbenyo, are you aware of any agreement um, entered into by government and you know a UK-based company on this it? matter? Are you aware of it? I don't know everything that government, uh, in so every agreement that government that enters into. So you're saying that he is uh, not telling the truth, that this is a false allegation? I said don't give you the evidence. All right. Okay, we'll end it here. That's uh, Fred Abunyo. He is uh, a Deputy National Communications Director of the Governing NDC. You're watching The Pulse. We're taking a short break, but uh, don't go away because I have a studio guest with me. You don't want to miss that. <laughs>